Hello and welcome to Crime Watch Daily Updates. I'm your host, Anna Garcia. Nowadays, weddings can cost a small fortune. One Southern California man's attempt to avoid paying for his nuptials left two people dead and dozens emotionally crushed. Daniel Wozniak was a community theater actor who needed money to bankroll his wedding and his honeymoon to his acting partner, Rachel Buffett, as well as pay off several debts. And he needed the money fast. So Daniel lived in the same apartment building as someone named Samuel Herb. Samuel was a 26 year old army vet who saved up over sixty thousand dollars in combat pay. Daniel saw the perfect target in Sam. So on May 21st of 2010, Daniel shot Sam at the same theater where hours later he would be back on stage in a leading role. Daniel beheaded Sam, dismembered his body and scattered his remains in a park. Daniel planned on stealing $50,000 from Sam to pay off his debts and still have some money left over for his upcoming vows. Then the same night, Daniel used Sam's phone to text Sam's friend, Julie, in a ploy to lure her to Sam's apartment. He shot Julie and framed the scene to look like she'd been raped and killed. It all came tumbling down for Daniel when cops arrested him at his bachelor party days later. He got caught because he hired a team to take the money out of Sam's account and investigators were able to link it all back to Daniel. He was convicted of two counts of first degree murder in December of 2015. The jury also voted to invoke the death penalty. Rachel, Daniel's now fiance, didn't get away either. In September of 2018, a jury found her guilty on two counts of being an accessory after the fact because she supposedly misled detectives during the investigation. She was sentenced to 32 months in jail. In July of 2021, Daniel was moved out of San Quentin, which is California's death row prison for males, to a lower security prison as part of a rehabilitation and work program. Now let's take a look back at the case that left two innocent people dead, all because one man was behind on his dues. The OC, the definition of idyllic Southern California living, beautiful weather, gorgeous people, and... There's a body in my son's apartment. There's a what? A body, a dead body. A dead body? This is as diabolical as a murder gets. A shocking crime that sends police on a manhunt for a trained killer. Served in Afghanistan. A combat veteran. Police were looking for an armed man who may be suffering from PTSD. But the odyssey to find their man will unravel a deceitful and deadly plot that no one would see coming. This guy's a monster. He was colder than an iceberg. No feelings, no emotion, just nothing there. The ripple effect and the people that were hurt by this, it goes out forever. Like the tides of the ocean, it all comes back to the shores of Orange County, California. Inside Costa Mesa Police Dispatch, when that 911 call comes in. There's a body in my son's apartment. There's a what? A body, a dead body. A dead body? Is it someone that you know, sir? I have no idea who she is. I don't know what's going on. Does your son know who it is? He's not here. Do you know where your son is? No, I don't. Costa Mesa police rush to an apartment complex where they make a brutal and bloody discovery. At this point, all we knew was that we had a young female deceased with a gunshot wound to the back of her head. She was in the bedroom lying partially on the bed and uh, her legs on the floor. And there's more. And it's personal. There's things written on on the back of her shirt, F you all yours. It really looked like it was your, I I mean, I hate to say run of the mill, but it looked like a run of the mill domestic violence murder. A purse and wallet near the body reveal the victim's identity. Her name is Julie Kibuishi. Crime reporter Jeremiah Dobra covered the story for the local paper, The Daily Pilot. Julie, by all accounts, was a a sweet young woman. She was 23, uh, loved dance, was very talented. But now Julie is the victim of a violent murder. And the prime suspect is the tenant of the apartment. His name is Sam Hare, a war veteran who's currently MIA. The police zeroed in on Sam pretty quickly. 
it seemed pretty obvious this girl was found in, uh, in his apartment. He uh, seemed like someone who could be capable of killing someone. Texts recovered from Julie's cell phone at the scene suggest a volatile, romantic relationship. The phone is blowing up between the two of them where he is apparently sending a message saying, I'm having a hard time, I need a friend to talk to. There's a text from Sam that reads, can you come over tonight at midnight alone? Going out for a bit, very upset, need to talk. A minute later, please don't tell anyone, please. And then, please, no sex. I need to talk to someone. I'm really not doing well. Julie texts, yeah, that's fine, Sam. I'm here for you like family. Authorities believe they've solved the whodunit part of the case. Now, they just need to find Sam. They questioned Sam's father, who discovered the body and made the 911 call. Mr. Herr was uh, in disbelief, uh, repeatedly said, no, my son couldn't be involved in this. There's no way. We didn't quite believe him at that point just because we couldn't find him. It was his apartment, dead girl, and it seemed like he was on the run. But bringing in their fugitive won't be easy. He's an Army veteran, trained killer, and he's been accused of murder before. Sam Herr had a criminal history that led us to believe that he was a suspect in this crime. When detectives run Sam Herr's record, they're shocked to discover that eight years earlier, he was arrested and charged with capital murder. This, uh pretty quickly got police thinking Sam was the killer and they started looking for him as their number one suspect. It's an all points bulletin on the lookout for Sam. We took into account his military background. We didn't know where he'd served in Afghanistan if he was exposed to PTSD. Uh, we didn't know what the relationship between Julie and Sam was. We didn't know if the message on her sweater was intended for someone third party or for us, the police department. We didn't know if we had a love triangle uh, so he was our number one guy. Then police get a tip from Sam's bank. His ATM card is being used at one of the branches, and it appears their wanted man is close by. We know that Sam Herr is basically on the run from this homicide case, and, and we are tracking his credit card activity, and we see that his credit cards are being in, used in the Long Beach area. Investigators pull the bank's surveillance cameras, expecting to see Sam. But they don't. Who is this person using Sam Hare's ATM card? And where's Sam? Minutes later, a second ATM swipe, this time at a pizza place. Police arrive just in time to catch the delivery driver en route. We were able to stop the pizza delivery guy several blocks away, confirm that that was the credit card. It was Sam Hare's credit card. Now cops plan to make their own delivery. Costa Mesa police detectives are on a manhunt for Army veteran Sam Hare. Investigators believe he killed his lover, Julie Kibuishi, and now he's on the run. Police were looking for an armed man who may be suffering from PTSD, who might have murdered this young woman in his apartment. That's high priority. That's all points bulletin. That, that, that gets that kind of attention. Cops are trying to track his every move. They turn their focus on his ATM transactions and hit gold. Hare's just ordered a pizza on his card. The pizza delivery is headed to a home address in Long Beach, California. Now stationed outside Hare's house, SWAT teams prepare to take down a violent and mentally deranged combat veteran. But when they knock on the door, a shocker. This 16-year-old boy's name was Wesley Freilich. Hardly an armed and dangerous fugitive. It's a pimple-faced teenager who's scared to death. Wesley Freilich is immediately ruled out as a suspect in the murder of Julie Kibuishi. In fact, Wesley doesn't even know Sam Hare, but he does know this man, Daniel Wozniak. Told us that Dan Wozniak had given him the credit card, and he had just been there a couple hours earlier, and uh, he had picked up $400. But who is Daniel Wozniak? And what's his connection to Sam Hare? Danny Wozniak was a community theater actor. He lived here in Costa Mesa, right across from Orange Coast College. He was engaged. He had a hard time holding a job. He's a young guy. He's in various plays. Apparently, in community theater, leading men are in demand, people who have time to, to go through a production and are willing to take the lead in the play. 
Um, so that's what he spent most of his time doing. As seen here in outtakes for an upcoming play. Hi, my name is Dan Wozniak. I'll be playing the role of John Davis in Orange Cat. <laughs> okay, take it again. He really loved doing these plays. He didn't want to work. He kept getting fired from job after job. And he wanted to uh, maintain this lifestyle where he's got you know, pretty young fiance, they're about to get married. Daniel's fiance is his acting partner, Rachel Buffett. Their wedding is less than 48 hours away. By all accounts, he's living the high life. In fact, he was at his bachelor party in Huntington Beach. But his world was about to come tumbling down. Homicide detectives break up the party with an arrest warrant. One team went in the front entrance. Uh, myself and uh, Sergeant Keith Davis went in the rear so no one could flee the restaurant. We went into kind of a private party room, opened the curtain, and Dan Wozniak and several of his friends were in this room. Lieutenant Ed Everett finally lays eyes on the elusive Daniel Wozniak. I immediately looked at Dan Wozniak. He made eye contact with me, uh, and he immediately turned white. You could see the blood kind of draining from his face. I knew at that point uh, there was more to him than he either knew where Sam was, was at, uh, he was hiding Sam, helped Sam flee, or he had more involvement in this than he was letting on. Cops haul Wozniak in, and back at the Costa Mesa Police Headquarters, Daniel denies any involvement in Julie's murder. He claims his only crime was a credit card scam that he and Sam had concocted. Basically, he came up with some scheme about uh, using the credit card, and he was going to give the credit card to Wesley, and they were gonna pull all this money out of Sam's account, and then Sam would report that he was a victim of, of theft. But before Daniel could cash in, he claims Sam made a startling confession. I got a knock on my door. I wanna say it was about 8, 8.30 in the morning. Yeah. Opened the door, it was Sam. He's like, there's a dead body in my apartment. He's like, okay, basically, as soon as you let me, I started doing some drugs and drinking heavily because I was very depressed about my family. I said, what did you do? He's like, I got a gun. He asked me for sex. Um, he was pretty up. He said no, and then he just shot her twice in the head. Daniel claims after the confession, he dropped Sam off at a local shopping center and never saw him again. But police believe Daniel is covering for Sam. So they turn up the heat during their interrogation and demand a DNA sample. What we're going to do is, um, this is a, a swap. We get a swap for okay. to eliminate you. Uh, should we take a second here? Oh, eliminate me? Yeah, eliminate you from any uh, any issues. So basically, just open your mouth for me. That's it. Oh, okay. okay. Well, that's <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you know, where it is, it's just an elimination process, you know. Once the DNA is collected, Daniel's memory starts to sharpen. At that point, he became uh, visibly nervous. And that's when he started to add more details to the story and change, make some changes. Now, I was in Sam's apartment Friday afternoon. Okay. And I know I did use the bathroom. You did use the bathroom? I used the bathroom, um, and I went... I'm not sure if I went out on the patio or not. Most of the time I do, but that day I don't know if I did or not. Okay, okay. Detectives are starting to get the impression that Daniel is worried his DNA will show up in Sam's apartment. But why? I think you know a little more about this thing than you're, you're developing to us. No, I don't. I think there's a little, a, a whole lot there, more. There may be, but please question me. Not any gaps that I, I want to fill, absolutely. As far as your participation in this thing? As far as my participation? Yeah. Yes, I helped him get away. Yes, I knew that he had killed someone, and yes, I knew that I stop, helped him. Stop, stop right there. Detectives remind him they have his DNA. We got your DNA? Yes. OK. Where's that DNA going to show up? Um, uh, in Sam's car. What about on Julie? No, it wouldn't be on Julie. You sure about that? Yes, I'm positive. Did you see Julie get in the apartment? No, I did not. No, I did not. No. At that point, he basically is now saying, yeah, I was in the apartment. Uh, I may have touched these things and, and this and that. Um, but again, it's not indicating 
uh, any, any real contact with Julie. Detectives still suspect Daniel is holding something back. They decide it's time for a little good cop, bad cop. First up, bad cop. Something. Uh, absolutely. You're arrested for murder, OK? Accessory to murder. That's what you're being arrested for. You don't want to talk to us, to us anymore? That's, that's okay, it. Okay, yeah, we're well, done. Hold on. Whoa, we're done. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. We're done. Unless you want to talk to us, we're done. I will talk to you about anything if it gets me to my wedding on Friday. No. That's what I will promise. Enter good cop, Lieutenant Ed Everett. Yeah, you got the answers. You can help us. I don't know what else you want me to say. I don't know. Tell us. I don't know. Tell us the truth. You're not that good of an actor. Dan Wozniak was an arrogant guy, and I think he thought he was going to act his way out of this. But Daniel seems to be cracking under the pressure from Costa Mesa's finest. Okay, fine. You know what? He didn't come down. He came down and said, help me. I went upstairs, and yes, I saw the body. Is that what you want to hear? No. We want to hear the truth. <sighs> that is the truth. When Dan Wozniak was changing the story, he indicated he was in Sam's apartment. At this point, that's kind of our aha moment, that he's involved in this more than what he's leading on to be. Then detectives press hard. They know Daniel is about to break. So they bluff. Detectives tell Daniel his DNA was found on Julie's body, even though those results won't be available for weeks. How did your DNA get on her? Because I was right over the body. What's that? Because I was right over the body. OK. So how did your DNA get on her? That I don't know. DNA doesn't just fall off. I don't know. Okay. I didn't touch her. I didn't do anything. District Attorney Matt Murphy is watching in the next room. He's not impressed. You know what he is? He's very bad at improv. You know, great at memorizing his lines, very bad at improv. And these detectives are all about putting somebody to it, putting them on their heels, and seeing if the story adds up. Then, detectives move in for the kill. What did you see? I saw two gunshots in her head. And I saw her pants, like, ripped and cut. I saw, like, you written on the back of the shirt. Where were the two bullet wounds? I don't know. Sam said he shot her twice. OK. And but you I just, saw, you I just, saw, I didn't see. You just told us you saw two bullet wounds. You were standing no, no, over. No, 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 no. Okay. Whoa, 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 okay. stop. Okay. How did your DNA get on? I was standing over the body. I saw two bullet wounds to her head. Is that what you're saying, Dan? You can't even keep your lies straight. So when Wozniak uh, basically told us he was in the apartment and saw two bullet wounds to Julie's head, I, I knew at that point he was lying. There's no second take for this actor. Daniel can't keep his line straight, and his script has just been flipped by his own admission. Anybody that's actually seen a woman who's been shot in the back of the head, you can't see how many bullet holes. She had long, beautiful black hair. You can't see how many bullet holes. And that immediately, that is the moment that the investigation turned, because those, those detectives who were there, who saw her, they know that you couldn't see two bullet holes. Police detectives in Costa Mesa, California, are grilling Daniel Wozniak. They believe he had something to do with Julie Kibuishi's murder. You just told us you saw two bullet wounds. You were standing no, 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 okay. Whoa, 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 stop. Okay. But cops had no idea just how involved Wozniak was. How did your DNA get on? I was standing over the body. I saw two bullet wounds to her head. That's exactly what you're saying, Dan. You can't even keep your lies straight. His acting ability on the stage uh, probably was better than it was in our interview room. Then, a sudden stalemate. You're done? You're done? Daniel refuses to talk. He wants to go back to his jail cell. While behind bars, Daniel calls his fiance, Rachel Buffett. He calls Rachel, who has just talked to his brother, Tim, and she's learned that Tim has evidence relating to the murder. She doesn't know what it is, but he's got some evidence. Police record the conversation. What did you do? I helped Sam cover some stuff up and helped him get some drugs. That's it. I didn't murder anybody. My mom's working on canceling all the wedding plans now, and I just talked to Tim, and I need to make a phone call to the detective now. Why? Tim says he has evidence with him, or, or he knew where it was or something. Then I'm doomed. 
What? Tim said that? Yeah, do you know that Tim had some evidence? Yeah. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Well, this is, this is ridiculous and I have to go tell the detectives no, the truth. No, no I, don't, I was... don't, 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 that can't be found. When we listened to those um, jail recordings, it, it showed us that there was panic in Dan Wozniak's voice. Um, that was the, one of the few times that there was some emotion, and it was emotion that he was going to be caught. Uh, Rachel Buffett was cool, calm, uh, collected. And currently out on bail for an accessory to murder charge. Now Rachel must choose between her fiance or freedom. No, babe, I'm going to do it. Listen to me. No. no. What? Trust me, please. I have to tell the truth on what I did. And I think you now know what it is. And it's bad. Imagine the worst, and that's what I did. Suddenly, Daniel is desperate to speak to detectives and spills his guts. You said you wanted to talk to me. What's going on? I'm crazy, and I did it. You did what? I killed Julia, and I killed Sam. OK. All right. I Where's killed the book. All right. Sam came first. It was all just about the money. That mm -hmm. was it. All right. 100%. And there's more, much more. Even veteran homicide detectives will be left speechless. Sam is decapitated. Okay. Yeah. He's at the military base. All right. In the theater. In the theater. If you go up the ladder from the theater, his head and hands have been decapitated, as well as his arm that had a tattoo. And you did it? Yes. He was colder than an iceberg. Uh, he had no feelings, no emotion, uh, just nothing there. Finally, Daniel breaks down the timeline of the events in his diabolical murder plot. It begins with a simple favor. He asks Sam to help move some boxes in a theater attic at a local military base. Sam was doing a good deed. When Sam turned his back, he knelt down. Wozniak produced his father's gun, shot him in the back of the head, but he wasn't dead yet. And he said, um, oh my gosh, I've been shocked. I need help. And, it, and we asked him at that point, well, what did you do next? And he said, well, I reloaded the gun and shot him in the back of the head again. Then, after killing Sam, Daniel does the unthinkable. He murders Sam Hur, and that afternoon goes to Fullerton and acts in this play. And we've got it on videotape. It's astounding. And he's laughing, and he's singing, and he's dancing. And then he goes and he murders Julie later that evening. Cops say Daniel sent texts from Sam's cell phone to lure Julie over that night. Once inside the apartment, Wozniak snuck up and shot her in the back of the head. Then he stages the crime scene to frame Sam. Next morning, an act of pure evil. Then Saturday morning, he gets up, he goes back to the military base. He cuts off Sam Hur's head and his hands. He throws them in a park. And perhaps the most depraved and callous act, after committing double murder and decapitating and dismembering one of his victims, Daniel returns to center stage. And then he goes down and he acts again in the play, singing and dancing. And because the play was coming to a close, they had the big, the big cast party that night. As evident in this cast party photo recovered by detectives. Daniel Wozniak's had a cast party with a beer in his hand, laughing and joking with other members of this play. And I mean, if a picture says a thousand words, we've got a photo of him um, throwing the, the shaka sign with his girlfriend uh, next to him at this cast party. Without a care in the world. And the motive for this heinous crime? Money. More than $60,000 Hare got for serving in the military. Wozniak wanted money so that he could go on the Royal Caribbean's cruise line and take an awesome cruise. Like that's, he literally wanted this money for his honeymoon. He killed these two people so he could take a trip. But before he could take his honeymoon, he needed to get away with double murder. And it would have been the performance of a lifetime if not for the seasoned detectives working the case. He was so enamored with his own ability to, to, to act and his own ability to put on a show, he had no doubt in his mind going into this that he was going to be able to convince a bunch of dumb detectives 
that Daniel Wozniak was not responsible. Wozniak thought he could convince the world that Sam Herr murdered Julie and he was somewhere out in the wind. And he thought he'd fooled him. But in reality, we had a group of really good detectives who weren't believing a word of it. Investigators managed to solve this murder case in less than a week with a full confession and damning evidence thanks to Daniel's brother. Tim was is not a real sophisticated guy and he just had these instructions to get rid of this stuff and instead what he did is he threw the backpack over a fence at his parents house. And when detectives opened the backpack? It was a cornucopia of evidence. I mean DNA, expended shell casings, the victim's financial information, it's everything a prosecutor could ever want and of course that also led us to the murder weapon itself. So it's like that's investigation wise the home run of home runs in, in any case. The murder weapon and DNA and blood and you know credit cards, passports, you can't ask for more as a prosecutor. And in one of the fastest deliberations in the history of Orange County capital murder trials, the jury takes just one hour to find Daniel Wozniak guilty of double murder and recommends the death penalty. Detectives claim Rachel Buffett knew about the murder and her case is still pending. She's charged with three counts of accessory after the fact. She's pleaded not guilty. Daniel Wozniak is a poster boy for why the death penalty exists in certain states. For a lot of murders, there are extenuating circumstances, but there are a few that are so awful and unnecessary, and the grief that they cause is so profound for the most trivial reasons that, that they really should be subject to the ultimate punishment, and this is one of those cases.